everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Louise, I am the maker on the move, and today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of my 2005 Ford Transit camper van named Olive. I bought Olive in early 2022, spent six months fitting her out, and then hit the road in June. I know you guys have seen a sneak peek of everything I've been doing in Olive, but I thought I'd give you a full tour before I completely rip everything out and start again. Come on in. So these windows we put in ourselves, it was a solid van when we got it. You're probably wondering why the outside of Olive looks like a little bit dirty and a bit grimy and why she has expanding foam on the side of her a i haven't cleaned her since last summer but also i wanted to keep olive looking a little bit shabby on the outside so that if you were going to break into somebody's camper van you'd break into somebody else's she would stay safe and secure with me olive is a medium height medium wheel based ford transit it gives us just enough space and isn't too difficult to park either <laughs> One of the first sewing jobs I'm going to do is I'm going to take these curtains up properly. So when we left, the curtains weren't actually up, but this keeps fraying and it annoys me every time I open or close the door. So the first job I'm going to do is get that sorted. So when I got back from my trip in the summer, everything was broken. I'm not going to lie, all the electrics, everything. So I've left it exactly how it was so you can see what we were facing, but also I can let you know what we will be changing in the future and which things I'll be sewing and crocheting for the project once they get a little bit further down the road. So this isn't like a normal van tour that you've seen before. I haven't cleaned, I haven't tidied, I haven't made everything perfect. I've left everything broken and everything's a mess. So you can see what van life is really about. Come on in. First up, obviously, we have our neck curtains and our normal curtains, because when we're away in the summer, we need to try and keep the bugs out um, and then also keep a little bit of privacy for us. This box here is the toilet box. So if you look inside, and eventually this is going to have some stick-on tiles in it, so it looks like a cool like little bathroom area. We only use the toilet in absolute emergencies, and on our six-week road trip, it only got used once, and that was when we broke down. But we try and not use it if we don't have to, because if you use it, you have to empty it and that's not my favourite job to do. Opposite we have another one of the same units except this one is drawers. So this drawer was mine and then this one currently has the gas stove that we have that's separate. Um, it's just a camping gas stove that most people have that we can use outside when we are cooking and we used for most of the summer if I'm totally honest but, and then the top actually opens up so there is extra storage down the back so at the moment I have a tray keep that all in there and it just adds a little bit of extra storage so classic van life is every time you need to go anywhere you have to move a ton of things so all summer we had to move the tire the table and the camping chairs every time we move the van so we stored them in the back when we were driving and then every time we came into the back we had to move them into the front so I'm gonna do that now then we'll have be able to have a little bit more space but I just wanted to show you the absolute realities <laughs> Easy as that. When I first got the van, it was a really dirty trades van. I wanted to get rid of the bulkhead that was originally here. So we got rid of that. We put in a wooden wall and a door so that we can get through to the front. We didn't actually use this. I think we only use it once or twice to grab something, but not to actually get through. But it's basically there in case of emergencies. So if anybody breaks in and we need to get through quickly, or if there's a fire, it's just an extra escape hatch mentally to know that you're, um, you're gonna be okay if you need it. And then up here, there's loads of storage, which has never been used very well. In the renovations, we'll be carpeting it so it's a lot more insulated, because that's one thing we found as we got to the middle of September, it was getting a bit cold in here. So the insulation definitely needs to improve. We have a little wardrobe space here, which you can hang about two things in. I'm hoping to try and making this a bit wider so that it's a bit more usable, but I don't want to use up too much kitchen space. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then there is the kitchen. Up this end, we have the fridge, which is a 60 litre fridge, which was plenty for two of us over the summer. We then have some storage under here and some more in the bottom. This has got the water tank in, and then we have the hob, which doesn't actually work. Never filled up the gas canister, so we'll be using the other one instead. So it looks pretty, does nothing. And then we have the sink here with a colander, which is really good. Also helps us carry all of our bits if we wanted to go and wash up somewhere else. This has drainage into a grey water tank in this cupboard but no tap because I didn't get a chance to fit the tap before I left so we just had a portable water thing that we used and for the six weeks we were away for that was absolutely fine. We then have this wall unit which I got when I was in Sweden because I needed a bit more space and um, it has some really handy hooks underneath as well as lots of storage. It's also got our lights in so these are the lights that we take when we uh, go to the toilet in the middle of the night if we go out of the van. They're also nice to have um, just to have a little bit of a glow in the van as well. We have all of the plates and um, pots and pans and things up here and then we have these fairy lights that go along as well which make it look very very cozy and give it a nice glow in the evenings. We also have this window so both of the windows on 
the sides I actually put in myself as well as both of the air vents they just need a little bit of finishing off and we have this blind here which um, again I'm going to put another blind up there so it's a bit more blackout because this one's kind of pretty see-through. We have the trusty kettle this has been absolutely invaluable not just for making things like tea in the mornings or in the evenings when you get cold but also for doing things like pot noodles and <laughs> cup of soups when you're really cold and you want something quick to eat. So the camper van has 200 watts of solar on the roof and 210 leisure batteries which I will show you later but we also have a 240 hookup but we've got some plugs here which run the fridge but the fridge is also run on 12 volt and this is also handy to have if there's any extra kitchen appliances like you want an electric kettle or a blender or anything like that. And we also have the reading for the solar panels as well so we can see how much voltage we have in the batteries. So over this side of the van this is more of like the living area Area rather than the kitchen we have these bench seats so these benches fold out into a bed which I will show you now in all honesty when I was away in the summer there was two of us in the van for a lot of it and it never changed into a sofa it just stayed a bed the entire time and we just like got snuggled in and had our like our little nests on either side I think ultimately the benches are gonna go and I'm gonna get a fixed bed in place up here we have lots more storage as well so ideally I'd like more storage this shelf was made specifically for this size container so it's a really good way to plan your van around the containers that you're going to be using because this shelf is the exact right size for those and the containers that normally sit up here are also the exact right size but they're in the house at the moment because obviously the van isn't in traveling mode we're just taking out on day trips at the moment so the bed's really simple to convert there's a roll of slats that go in between and then one of these squishes into the middle and you can just use it straight as a bed if you're probably thinking it's not a very big bed you're right it isn't luckily the two of us that are in the van aren't very tall part of the refit we're going to get a bigger bed so that normal sized adults can actually lay down flat the problem with that is though it does mean it's going to take up quite a lot of the kitchen which isn't ideal but i think oh Ultimately, we spent so much time in the bed, it doesn't make too much difference when you sort of use it as a sofa area. So I think it's better to sacrifice a bit of the kitchen space so that we can have more of the living space. And ultimately, we really only made like salads and stuff in the van. So as long as we've got somewhere to chop, we don't really need too much else. So while I'm away, I work from the van as well. We work from the bed or we have a folding table, which we can work from outside as well, depending on the weather. But um, it really is an all purpose area. So I think having somewhere a little bit more comfortable to do that would be an advantage. So I put in these bump outs because I see a lot of people do them in their vans and it was a complete waste of time and for me they're completely pointless. So we are going to be getting rid of these in the refit and putting extra insulation in like I said to make sure that the van is a little bit warmer. Also to make the van a bit warmer we will be putting one big piece of flooring down. At the moment there's lots of different bits of vinyl so it'll just be one big piece all together. In the ceiling as well over here we have an air vent. It's a twist to lift up and a twist to go back down and then the one above where you are is a vent which opens and closes i wanted a max air fan but that was like three times more expensive than this one so this is what we have and it was absolutely great during the summer it could take condensation and smells out as well as bring a nice breeze in if it's getting a bit too hot another thing to show you is our curtain poles it sounds a bit random and um, but they're actually a double curtain pole so that you can have two different layers on there at the same time and move them independently then here we have our coat hooks as well at the moment it's got a bag and some bits on this was invaluable in the summer because there's nowhere to hang towels or any items of clothing that you want to have um easy like coats and bags and things like that so it's perfect under the bench seats they're both the same we have this storage so these slats move backwards and forwards and you can get into everything at the moment there's blankets in this side i don't even know what's in this side if i'm totally honest it's really really good extra storage space and then in this side here have all of the electrics for the van so this is actually a bath mat that we put in to cover the batteries so that we won't be able to drop anything metal onto them so the rubber sort of helps to insulate it then we have the two leisure batteries here like i said we have the fuse box here for the 12 volt a fuse box which isn't set up correctly i know obviously i haven't been using the van the van hasn't been plugged in so this isn't unsafe and then i have a backup inverter in the back as well which i've never actually used and never needed to and then the solar panel controller is on the wall at the back we also have six individual led lights in the van so there's two above the bed there's two above the kitchen and then there's two underneath here as well so we have a nice little glow in the evenings so like i said the electrics aren't up to scratch and uh four of the six lights that i have in 
don't currently work and towards the end of the trip we were pretty much living in darkness <laughs> but it was all part of the adventure so i definitely need to get that sorted out in the future we also have lots of usb ports around the van there's two by the bed and there's one right by the door as well that one is really really good because if you're outside working outside this door it's somewhere you can plug in and it's very very easy to access we also have one equally at the back door so again if the back doors are open we can get to that very easily and also there is a 240 volt socket there as well so easy to plug in laptop and everything while we're working outside. We also have these which are really really cheap but worth their weight in gold. So these became like our bedside tables which I know sounds absolutely ridiculous. When we were going to bed we could put our phones in and anything like that and they would keep them all there nice and secure. For the first couple of weeks I was losing everything down the side of the bed. So if you saw the conversion video it was an absolute nightmare. I'll tag that in the description box down below if you want to go back and have a look. But basically everything I touched fell apart. I managed to get it to a point where we could go and use it and it was the best six weeks. At least 10 things broke every day. I was constantly fixing things. It was getting a a bit stressful towards the end when the actual van broke but it was all part of the adventure having said that now i've used it there are things that i definitely would want to change in the future so i'm going to be taking everything that you can see out and putting in a fixed raised bed so there'll be lots more storage underneath there will also be a storage section down the side which will be great and give us a little bit of extra surface space but it does mean like i said that the kitchen is going to halve in size now i haven't quite figured out how that layout is going to be but it is going to be a lot smaller so the two cupboard units are going to stay exactly where they are the drawers are going to be integrated into the new bed and the toilet box is going to stay exactly where it is this storage is probably going to go and the other one is just going to get bigger and deeper as is the storage in the kitchen because if we're getting rid of some of the kitchen cupboards at the bottom we're going to need to get more storage at the top obviously the maker on the move i will be sewing and crocheting things as i go to help with the project so during the refit which will be the next couple of videos coming up i will be showing you the progress i'm making in the van as well as one project that i'll be making to use in the camper van once i get back on the road so there'll be things like curtains for above the bulkhead window shades cushions all sorts of different things probably some bunting loads of different things that i'll be making to make the van more practical but also a lot more cozy as well obviously it's going to have a new lick of paint as well and we're just going to freshen everything up and unfortunately so my least favorite job of the whole van conversion was putting the ceiling up and i think there's a leak in the front air vent because a couple of the boards have bowed so we've got to redo the ceiling and i can't tell you how little i am looking forward to that <laughs> it's going to be have to be one of the first things we do but then at least i know all of the electrics will be safe and that there won't be a leak if there is one i don't know if there is but i've got to take the whole ceiling down before i can have a look so um wish me luck and watch any future videos to find out what actually happens there is a certain type of freedom that you get when you're in a camper van it's like backpacking but you take your house with you you always know you have somewhere safe to sleep you have a lot more freedom to travel wherever you want and we saw so many things that we just wouldn't have seen if we had traveled in any other way we ended up randomly in Oktoberfest. we stayed in some beautiful places in sweden in the czech republic and there were places that we hadn't planned on going or staying and we saw some of the most amazing things also it is nice to have your own space so that you can sort of snuggle in at night and not have to think about packing your bag every time you want to leave a hotel or move around and yeah it was just really nice to get settled in get cozy and just enjoy the summer at a slower pace I also want to be able to use Olive as a day van as well. So not only for long trips away, but also if you saw a video I posted a couple of weeks ago, we went to Hunt Stanton and just used it as a base for the day out. So I'm looking forward to using it a lot more in that way as well. So that's it for the van tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been very quick, but we'll be showing you all of our new renovations in, coming up in the next couple of weeks. So hit the subscribe button and you won't miss anything as well as all of the sewing projects, like I said, that I'll be doing along the way as well. So you'll be able to keep up to date with them. Thank you very much for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week for another video. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Your walk. Your... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's like all over. <laughs> Classic van life. Um, and then <laughs> Classic. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Classic. Move one thing, everything falls over. Exactly. I'm five foot four, so um And I'm shorter than that. <laughs> you're, you are, yeah. I'm the tall one. <laughs> so I work from the that was a really loud clap. <laughs> Um. <laughs> 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 There's a 
Excellent. Okay. <laughs>